Come on, stay there. All right, okay, cool, cool, right? Good morning, Trinidad and Tobago. <clears throat> um, we inside? Are we inside? Master control, the blast from the past. Are we inside? Give me a thumbs up if we have it. Yes, nice. Okay, cool. Trinidad and Tobago, and we hope that you're hearing us. We're going to be doing the um, calls on the... We're going to be doing calls again. We're going to be taking your calls. We'll ask some questions this morning because Trinidad and Tobago seems to be heading to a disaster zone. This morning, I read in the paper that the Prime Minister has said to the people of Trinidad and Tobago and the media copy and paste this that Dennis Moses and Camille Robinson Regis broke no law, broke no rules, trying to evade customs, sworn ministers of government with court trying to evade customs, lodged a complaint that they were stopped evading customs and immigration and the person who stopped them, the message that this donkey of a prime minister sent to the nation is that if you are upholding the law, he will take action against you. That is the message. And today, Devon Maraj, my phone number is 6822110. You and I, we don't see eye to eye. You and I, Devon Maraj, we never saddle horse. You and I, Devon Maraj, we never walk the same road. But this morning, Devon Maraj, Philip Edward Alexander is supporting you and defending you in your quest for a right anytime, anytime anybody stands up for freedom of the people, civil rights, human rights, they will find a friend in Philip Alexander. And it is time to fire this donkey of a prime minister, keep Christopher Mugabe Sabga Rowley, and to take his band of comic clowns, Rhoda Barrett, Enchan Ishmael, and the rest of the, <laughs> listen, eh? I came to talk to Trinidad and Tobago this morning about our justice system in Trinidad and Tobago because nobody talking about it. But I want keep Rowley to know that he not scaring nobody off. That his band of formerly overweight lawyers that looking to make every question that a citizen asks about where our money is going. You trying to make that illegal? Well, we're going to deal with that and we're going to have to continue to deal with that. I hear my words read. I speak like this and then I hear them read out in court. I am looking at people who are making off with hundreds of millions and billions of dollars of this country's money. To this day, we cannot find out what is the deal with China exactly. or whoever else exactly. and our pitch lake. Yeah. Who is supposed yeah. to ask the question? Yeah. Yeah. Who is supposed to ask the question? Which office of state? Tell me, Devant, release that number. I will call that person. Who is supposed to tell you? The people of Trinidad and Tobago that they are protecting your interests. How did this donkey end up in government? What just took place with Petrotrin is madness. madness. Absolute and complete yes, madness. Yes, yes. We allow a government to diagnose a national um, company, an essential state enterprise, Petrotrin. This failure of a government. Boy. Diagnose Petrotrin as failing and find three quick sales for it. That is madness. It's not no three quick sale. The hand sale already line up. The hand sale already line up because that is what the agenda. Who asked was. those questions, Tony? When you find out that the prime minister was lying to the nation, lying in parliament, yeah. lying to the media, yeah. your prime minister is a double tongue deceiver. Right. He is a liar. Keith Christopher Mugabe Sabga Rowley is a liar. Keith Rowley told the nation that Petrotrin was not going to be sold while he and his band of criminals were interviewing people to come and run its replacement. Here, here. Who holds the Prime Minister to account? Who, which office of state mm -hmm. is supposed to say, hey, mm -hmm. you can't sell Petrochin without due diligence? Mm -hmm. Which office holder? Because if we do not have an office holder responsible for protecting the national assets, the people's patrimony, if we do not have that, we in trouble. We're in trouble as a nation. It is quarter past nine this morning. 628-9595-628-3131. If you think it is time for an election to fire this band of mocking pretenders, call this morning, Thursday morning. And if you're a PNM sycophant, 
If you watch your brothers and sisters get a throat bus in TSTT and Petrotrain while one percenters making off with the nation's money, don't call my number. 628-959-5628-3131. We open those lines to people who think, civic-minded, civil-minded patriots who think it is time for a better nation. Trinidad and Tobago cannot continue this way. Correct. Take it. Beautiful. Hello, good morning. Good morning, guys. Morning, morning. Um, yeah, time for election now. It's time for election. Time for election. Time for election now, yeah. but under the um, last government, they deal with the um, six leg. They have the information. They, they have the information. So, but why do people don't have the information? No, wait. Here what I call us here, and this is important. If the PNM know, and the UNC know, and the people don't know, that is a problem. Ah, correct. Call and continue. Go ahead, talk your talk. We're ready for the election. We're ready for the election. I agree with you. Thank you. 628-959-5628-3131. Morning, morning. Morning. This is Corey Lexan right now. Right now. Thank you. 628, we should do it as a poll. That's two so far say yes. Let me write it down. Give me a pen and a paper. Again, I, again, I will feed back in my headphones. I don't know what is the cause of that. It's a general stuff. Is it? No, do, do, well, it might be this. It's yours. It's me? Yeah, you, you exposed. <laughs> All right, so we're going to try something different with Tony's headphones. And we'll see if that makes a difference. We apologize for the delays. And yes, the phone is, as usual, well lit. Yeah. And I want to ask questions. We can take those calls. Take those calls. Slow it down. All right, we're gonna have to get some adjustments done here to the headphones. Low down, <laughs> all alone. Yeah, okay, cool, right. We're doing all kind of magic in the back here this morning. <laughs> and I'm still getting my feedback. We apologize to that, Chen and Tobago. We're sorry for the delay, 628 let's go. Hello, good morning, talk your talk. Call the elections. Yeah. Fire him. Fire them. Fire all. Yeah. Thank you. I vexed this morning. I vexed this morning. Look, look, we have calls all over the they, they, they find the numbers we didn't even know we had. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. All right. Wheel and come again. Wheel and come again. Yeah, making that call. Your, your phone on mute. Hello, good morning. morning. Hello, good morning. Well, look at that. They must be well jamming and blocking me. Hello, good morning. Find the, find the, find Morning, morning. Good morning. Not the solution. No. Not the solution. Color. Nobody taking on the UNC. Nobody taking on the UNC. Kamala have 17 people walking around with her who getting paid to walk. Nobody taking on the UNC. I need to keep it, I keep it short though, eh, because we have plenty callers trying to get in. But one of these days you are a call and get interviewed on the station. You have contribution to make and we want you to make your contribution. But we want to give everybody a chance this morning to vent this plane. It is time to fire this government. Do you agree? I agree 100%. 100%. Evil government. Fire them, fire them, fire them. Let's take our next caller. Thank you for that. 628 Hello, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Fire them. Yeah. Fire them. Another thing. Why don't you start this because of business men? Because you are fire this country. I think that we have a new commissioner of police. The new commissioner of police is running through the seven to ten thousand applications that were that were lodged. He, that were lodged with him because the last the last commissioner of police was acting and on vacation for fifteen years. But we will vote <laughs> them out. Thank you. Take that call. Hello, good morning. Call elections. Yes. Tobago yes. suffering, boy. Yes. Tobago suffering. Thank yes. you, caller. 628 Hello, good morning. Yeah, morning. 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 
That this was a this was an attempt to bust the union. They didn't sell Petrochin, they bust the union first. And Ansel Roger and David Abdullah have questions to answer. We will talk about that next week, Tuesday. Mark the calendar. Take that call. 628-9595-628-3131. Morning, talk your talk. <laughs> and it's that. <laughs> 6289595 Good morning. Hey, listen, a man. We need investigations from the top yeah, down, inside yeah. out. Thank you, caller. Have a lovely Thursday. 6289595 Call inside and talk your talk. Hello, good morning. Good morning. morning. Hi, good morning. I'm calling from outside, but I have a ticket already waiting. Ah, I love this girl. Love this girl. Yes. Yes, come home and vote. Come home and, and vote and them out. Country. Vote Reclaim them out. Reclaim their country. Vote them into oblivion. Launch the investigation. Put a government in office that is not beholding to the 1% and the 3% and the finances. Because it's the same puppet masters pulling string on PNM and UNC. Thank you, caller. Have a lovely Thursday. We have all kind of questions to ask. 628 Hello, good morning. Talk your talk. Yes, good morning. Morning, morning. Oh, the man is the, the man is yeah. the worst boy. The man is the worst. He could spoil hog food by not working in the country, boy. Get him out. Fire him. Chase them out of town. Thank you, caller. Thank you. 628 Hello, good morning. Talk your talk. Caller, you're giving us feedback. You're giving us feedback. Control your, your equipment. Morning. 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 Stick up in, stick up in, stick up in, stick up in. All you careful, all you, all you careful, all you careful. Them fellas getting on dirty. They coming to find you and take away your children Christmas present. Careful, careful. Six two eight nine five nine five six two eight three one three one. Talk your talk, Trinidad and Tobago. This is madness. Nothing is working in Trinidad and Tobago. Yeah, yeah. In a world, the global economy has grown three and a half percent for two years straight. Yeah, this is country sick. in a calm, imbert, induced recession. Yeah. Madness. Perfectly said. Absolute madness. Yeah, we yeah. cannot six two eight nine five nine five. Take that call. Hello. Good morning. Morning. Call, call, call that was now. a sexy voice. Yes. Thank you, Granny. Call election yes, yes. now. Six two eight nine five nine five six two eight three one three one. Listen, all we say it is it not working. It not working. If you can't do the job, fire yourself. Keep rolling. You wake up this morning and you know you're the most grotesque failure of a prime minister this country has ever had. Yeah. You can count for nothing and say that this was done to the benefit of the people. All you've done is led a marauding charge through this nation. Hey, take that call. Talk your talk. Morning, morning, morning. You see, yes. you see, you yes. see, you see this this question. Yes. Morning, darling. Yes. You see this question bringing out the women. Yes. Women have more belly, back, and balls in this country than men. Yeah. This question bringing out the women. The PEP will mobilize the women from the very young to the very old. Take that call. Hello, good morning. Talk your talk. Call the yes, elections man. now. Yes, call it man. now. And you know, fire them. And I will tell you this: fire thing. all the office, all Why? the all, all the appointees. The people. Fire all the, those that are in charge of making it so that they, they could cover up the crimes. Hello, good morning. Morning. I don't listen to none of them. I don't watch the news anymore. <laughs> I love him. <laughs> Listen, uh, you're right. Listen, the minister, the minister, look on. Bill, like we could talk policies. I tell you, in exactly seven minutes, we're talking policy alone, so we're taking calls for the next seven minutes. Thank you for that call. Yeah. Talk your talk. Morning. 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 Yeah, yeah. I was happy and too. I vote right. for Rowley. I want to cut off that finger. <laughs> I want to cut it off with a yeah. gardening shears yeah. and throw it away. Thank you, darling. Have a lovely day. 628-9595-628-3131. Yeah. Good morning. Talk your talk. Hey, yes. we we working on it. Take Good my right, number. Correct. Take my number. There's no crime in taking my number. Six eight two twenty one ten. Take my number. Send me a message. Let me know your area. We'll put you on with the party organizers. Hello. Good morning. 
morning. Call yes. election. Oh gosh, darling. <laughs> Out of 30 calls, they get one in. Love me. The UNC. Listen, it's like saying you want to get a heart attack as a solution to cancer. We take that call. <laughs> Hello, Sorina. good morning. That's Norina. Yes. Morning, morning. Yes. Oh, 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 you know what they're doing now? Oh, right, we stick a pin there because you know what they're doing. No, no, no. You know what they're doing now? You can, you can take that last call there. What they're doing now is that the UNC, what they just do is they text all the callers. To call into 104. Hello, good morning. Hi, good morning. Morning, morning. Yes. This is a man. Yes. Oh my yes. gosh. That's it. That was a perfect call to bring to a close these calls. Thank you very much. Let me get into, get into the thing. Let me talk this talk. I want to ask some questions. I want to put this in the public space. Because if we've ever had leadership, this donkey of a prime minister is telling the nation this morning that he wants to take his time with how we deal with the Chief Justice. Now, Madness. I don't know. You see, I'm following this story with the Chief Justice and I'm not weighing in on it. And I'll tell you why. I don't get in people's personal business. You see all that kind of kakana? I don't get involved in that. The man who accusing the Chief Justice, well, there should be a system by which that accusation could be ventilated. It shouldn't come down to fire the man because I don't know. But what I would fire the Chief Justice for is the condition of the courts still. I want to I wanna cite three examples. A man breaking to Stevens and Johnson's. There are people who are listening to this show this morning that born after Stevens and Johnson's closed down have children of their own. A man breaking into Stevens and Johnson, this is a breaking and entering that took 25 years to work its way through the courts. 25 years. There is a cost to keep that case on the docket. Yes. Just without hearing it once, without even calling it once, just to keep it listed on the docket term after term after term for 25 years have a cost. How could a matter that is a breaking and entering take 25 years in our court system? The people who were charged with beheading Kuri, remember that one? Yeah. They kidnapped the Begon, the fellow who used to make the fly spray. Mm -hmm. They kidnapped him and cut off his head. Remember that? Yeah. That is 23 years ago that happened. That matter, no call. Wow. That matter, no call. <laughs> We have a member of the Progressive Empowerment Party who joined the party. She was a former officer of the law. She left in disgust. She said to me, her sister, her case took 17 years. She was raped by the ranking officer in a police station. And it took 17 years for her case to work its way through the system. I want to understand. I want to understand how it is that our justice system could be that manifestly dysfunctional and those are not the exceptions. Mm -hmm. Vernon Dilemma, a name that is synonymous with, with, I mean, the man was a massive, he had a massive career. Vernon Dilemma as a criminal defense attorney wrote the book. Mm -hmm. Plenty of people using Vernon Dilemma techniques now. Vernon Dilemma told me, Philip, there is only a certain amount of murder cases that our system could take. It is a number like 12 or 14. He says, so when you arrest 100 people for murder, only 14 of them get injustice. Now, I know how we just move in Trinidad because the system kind of wonky. Mm -hmm. We don't know what is justice. We don't understand due process. So all they have to do is give a man a case and we think he's guilty. Mm -hmm. Give a woman a case, she's guilty. And we're not dealing with due process. We're not dealing with working it through the courts. If you arrest a person for a non-bailable offense and put them in jail for 30 years, waiting on a case to call, that is a crime against humanity, not just that person. We have a system right now in Trinidad and Tobago that has a massive amount of people incarcerated, convicted of nothing. They've never had due process. Their day in court is delayed by poverty and otherwise. And yet, they are stuck, incarcerated, because they cannot access the system that normal people access. Right. And I am trying to understand why this morning, the Chief Justice could vacate 
every matter. You see, they had come and stunned Section 34 to free Ish and Steve and their catch. But they sold it ostensibly to deal with this issue. When the parliament got together and repealed Section 34, it was an exercise in foolishness that was more rowley stunt, more Kamala stunt. They didn't think that all they had to do was amend Section 34 to increase, include white-collar crime and then send it back to do what you said it was built to do, which was to treat with matters that are in the system longer than 10 years that go in nowhere. Vacate them. If as long as it is not blood crimes, murder, rape, treason, white-collar crimes, vacate them. Right. How could you have people sitting down in a jail cell spending more time there now than they could have been convicted and sentenced yes. to? Yes, we were having this discussion some weeks back and we were saying that a man, if he had pleaded guilty, would have, would have spent less time in the jail than the time that they are spending right now the waiting. The Director of Public Prosecutions has the power to vacate all of those matters with the stroke of a pen. The director of public prosecutions could summon the commissioner of prisons for a detailed accounting. We've lost a prisoner in this country. They don't know where he's gone. But they could account for a detailed listing of all the prisoners and all the matters. Take it up with the chief justice. Go through them. Separate what is blood crimes, what is treason, what is white collar crimes. Separate those. And all the other, marijuana smoking, jump wall, lock neck, them thing, vacate it. If the person is in jail, waiting on a case longer than it would have taken if they were convicted and sentenced, you have, it yeah, is a yeah, human yeah, rights yeah, atrocity. Yeah, yeah, and correct. we're talking thousands of people. You're correct, you're correct. Now, the DPP is not the only one with that power. The Chief Justice have that power too. Uh, the Chief Justice could call them, have everybody plead guilty, mm -hmm. and sentence them to time served. Mm -hmm. Let them go. Mm -hmm. Let them go. Again. Nobody know what they're doing anymore. And the DPP and the Chief Justice are not the only two people that have that power. Her Excellency, the President, have that power too. Yeah, yeah, she actually has something to do. Let them plead guilty <laughs> and pardon them. And I'm telling Trinidad and Tobago, regardless of whether or not inside of there have people who did the crime, we cannot push aside human rights and essential civil rights as a crime fighting tool that is not how it goes mm -hmm. and if you tolerate that today for people who don't look like you one day they will write a law for you and nobody will be there to stand with you because you've already said we could bypass essential liberty for temporary security this country could be fixed in a heartbeat our national security could be fixed in a heartbeat. Keep Christopher Mugabe Sabga Rowley knows. Like Kamla Pasad Darumai Bisesa knows. Mm -hmm. Like Pazdeo Pande knows. Mm -hmm. And Patrick Manning ah, yeah, yeah. knew yeah. that there is a document in the Ministry of National Security outlining how to stop the drug trade in Trinidad and Tobago. Step one. And to all of the current Keith Rowley and former heads of the National Security Council who play dumb and Rowley is playing dumb now that those little drugs that little mountain of drugs that Stuart young stepdaughter get catch with came in this country and more important than locking her up for having it I want to know how it gets inside of China Tobago we don't make cocaine here mm -hmm. how it gets here Correct. way past how come that is not the conversation where the cocaine that they catch on Mona's Island who paid for that cocaine how did 600 million dollars make its way to monas island who gave them that cocaine the 600 million dollars that went to norfolk virginia from trinidad and tobago in 2014 how did that cocaine get into trinidad and tobago how did it pass to leave yeah. all of these are questions we are not asking but, but the classic to that is is that both the pnm and the unc have no answers to give the, the, the population, have not done anything proactively to address that. Because like you said, it's several administrations down the road that have the information pertaining towards putting security on our borders. But all here, out there in Trinidad and Tobago still want to go and say a running down to, pay, to, 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 to vote PNM and to vote UNC. 
Be real, Trinidad and what Tobago. What have you gotten for that vote? Exactly. What have you gotten for that vote? Think about this, eh? And it's not if I can get a CPEP job or if I can get a HDC house. What you're supposed to want to get for your vote is a properly run country. Let's talk this talk this again. Is it. Securing the nation's borders is job one. Gary Griffith was on 98.1 Isaac Radio, Christian Radio, last night. And Gary said he has no responsibility for, the, for securing the borders and that it is essential. He knows. He is commissioner of police. Only appoint Super Gary and tie in his hand. Because while he's trying to pick up 50 gun and 100 gun today, a thousand gun coming in from Cedras. So who you fooling? Kid. You are head of the National Security Council, Stuarty Boy. You are the Ministry of National Secu Minister of National Security. Security. Yeah? Eh? Why can't you today pick up the phone publicly, invite Heyman Fazir and Golali and them to come and cover it? Call Trump. Say, listen, send, send some Coast Guard trawlers to secure Trinidad and Tobago borders for me, please. Because them have a million. Them Just have a million. Just they, they, listen, all you need to do, if a Trinidadian want to understand how a proper secure border is, get on a boat and try to drive up into New York Harbor without stopping. See how quickly they send you to Davy Jones Locker. And to those who don't understand what Davy Jones Locker is, that means your ship sink. Because they will sink you. The first thing they will do is contact you. And then they will come at you. And if you evade them, they will sink you. And Trinidad and Tobago has no security on our borders. Every now and then, we just see one little Coast Guard boat parker behind the Hyatt. Mm -hmm. The rest of them lining and partying down in Hearts, cutting Chagaramas. What is going on? Keith Rowley come to power and cut the essential security budget to the national security helicopters so that they could build golf course in Tobago. You think you know what you're dealing with here? This country is a mad-ass country led by mad people. We cannot continue to accept this foolishness and call this governance. Yeah. Step one, shut down the borders so that marine craft trying to enter Trinidad and Tobago waters can be stopped, questioned, searched, and directed to the designated, dedicated landing zones. Yes. That is step one. So you can't drive your boat from Venezuela up the Carony and drop off. You can't drive from Colombia to Bayshore and Shorelands and drop off. Somebody will be there to stop you. You can't come from Mexico into the yacht club and pull up with your big cooler and jump out your, your, your million dollar yacht and go on with your cooler and nobody saying, excuse me, yeah. can that, I take a yeah, peek? Let, let, yeah. let me see what I have inside of there now. Let me see what kind of alcohol you have, boy. <laughs> How much tequila you have in there, boy? Keston trim <laughs> OPVs was not the solution. Trinidad and Tobago could buy a hundred million boat. We buying a hundred million boat to park up in Chagaramas. We buying a hundred million boat to give calm inbred friends in Chagaramas contract a clean and paint boat. Check your history. Check what's going on in the country. We have nine boats. Contact Reginald McLean. He could tell you day and night where those boats parked up. We played smart with stupidness and want to talk about OVV, OPV. And he say, she say, fire all. Yeah. Fire all. all. Under the PNM and the UNC, this yeah, country exactly. was allowed to function as a narcotics pipeline. Fire all. Where did the cocaine that they found in the yacht valued at a billion dollars? Yeah. Where that was on its yeah. way to Spain, yeah. that originated in Trinidad and Tobago. <laughs> where did that cocaine come from? Who owned the shipyard that fixed that yacht? How come these things have no owners? How come people get away with this kind of madness? Step one, step one, secure the borders. A phone call to Canada. Canada has most, more Coast Guard in their lakes than we have in our sea. A phone call to Canada. Canada will send boats to support Trinidad and Tobago. Six months. We could do rotation. We could do Japan for six months. Canada for six months. Spain for six months. Portugal for six months. Britain for six months. America for six months. Germany for six months. It is the secure the borders and the drug trade exercise in collaboration with all of our international partners. Brazil will send Coast Guard people for we if we want it. Yeah. Shutting down the borders is a phone call away and they're fooling you. 
And after that, I want to tell you, you could go on Amazon now. While I'm talking to you, check it. Go on Google. Google Sonar Boys. Zo Google unmanned aerial vehicles and you will understand that you could run a ring around this country of sonar boys three miles out and unmanned drones that when you three miles out at sea we over you filming you heat sense heat sensors ultraviolet night vision so we see in everything that's going on and could dispatch interceptor helicopters and interceptor boats but we do not want to do it and the people have to ask why because we're talking about fighting crime but the illegal drug trade is the fuel that drives crime that's in this country right. and if we're not addressing that that's we're playing right. smart with stupidness Correct. step one secure the borders if they're not securing the borders, if Kamala cannot explain why she didn't secure the border in five years, ignore her. Thank you very ignore much. Ignore her. Thank you very if much. If Keith Rowley cannot account for why three years in office, he on his second or third minister of national security, mm -hmm. Edmund Dillon and Faris al rawi admitted accidentally in their first year in office that they all know securing the borders is a solution to crime. Super Gary Ole working the man to the, to, to the bone. Help him. Secure the borders. That is step one. Step two, unstuff the containers on the ports. Your prime minister, your head of National Security Council, told the nation that 40%, that is four in 10 containers that come to this country, pass through the ports from ship to trailer, out of the port without so much as a cursory check on examination in a country that has shipped billions of dollars of cocaine to the world that is insanity tony but but we was talking that talk yesterday tony, that is insanity Philip, yesterday with the issue pertaining to moses and them coming through with, with in the airport if we have a history showing that we have had diplomats in diplomatic pouches having illegal substances well all right so let me say that is step three because because step two is to unstuff the containers on the port i understand that the downtown owners and merchants association and the trinidadian Trinidad and tobago manufacturers association are surprisingly against this idea like they pretend that if we unstuff the containers on the port it will cause a massive backlog but Singapore moves more ships in an hour than we move in two years. Yeah. Singapore moves more containers in an hour than we move in two years. We have Idleland. We have Point Lisas. We could have built for the money they raping the Aripo Forest with. We could have built a proper port ten times the size of the port of Port of Spain in Point Lisas. Because the port of Port of Spain is only do one thing, cause traffic. It has no purpose to be there. 90% of the containers leave Port of Spain. So why they coming into Port of Spain? To jam up on that little two lane, two by four rights and road and cause stress in town. We have no government. We have no government with vision. Keith Rowley's talk a crocus bag of ass every time he open his mouth and talk. And it is time Trinidadians see it for what it is and fire this donkey and do not consider the yellow band of comic clowns as a solution because they've done none of this yeah. they've done none of this if you move the port out of port of spain you will lower the cost of shipping if you move the port out of port of spain to port point please ask, in a facility 10 times the size the nine times the size is just for you to come with your trucks yeah. i've given you 20 gates i've given you big like the mexican border 20 lanes they could come out with bring your trucks no traffic nobody keeping your back designated dedicated immigration and customs officials on every lane and stuff your container let me see that your shipment a bicycle tire is really bicycle tire yeah. let me open them foreign use cars bonnet and take off the air filter and see what inside of there is not cocaine let's open the trunk and make sure it's not gun parts this is what we're dealing with in trinidad and tobago and we are not addressing it step one is secure the borders completely three miles out at sea nothing in nothing out without a stop without a search step two unstuff the containers step three talk your talk that diplomatic pouch issue in a country where drugs were found in a diplomatic pouch raises the point. This is my point. Why is there not a mechanism available now? If you don't want us to search it, close down your embassy. Ah. Take a two years. Stick yeah. a pen. Yeah. Stick a pen. Yeah. Because we don't need embassies anymore. Eh? High commissions and embassies is jobs for the boys. Right. There was a time when, the, and this is still the law in Trinidad and Tobago, for those who don't know, the vehicle that have the most right of way on the nation's roads is not fire. It's not ambulance, it's not police, 
It's not the president or the prime minister. The vehicle that have the most right of way on the nation's roads, that every other vehicle, under siren, under flashing lights, fire service must stop, ambulance must stop, even if they're on their way to an emergency. The vehicle that has the most rights on the nation's road is the postal service van. Because a letter could start and stop a war. And the postal service van is still the vehicle with the most right away. And that is why embassies was important. Because you needed your ambassador to read a letter and say, By God, Charlie, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get him on the phone. You, you needed people in the theater of operations, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. You needed people. So I sent a letter from Trinidad to Charlie. Right. Contact his counterpart in high commission office. And they all meet right. and debate and discuss. Write a letter back. So the so the conversation the world is different now. The conversation took about two, three weeks, four weeks, a month. Yeah. But we get into the bottom of the problem. But in Trinidad, Rowley could FaceTime Trump. True. Trump now have Rowley number. Because Devon Maraj <laughs> gave it out. And the CIA <laughs> made a note. And and but the nation, the world had Trump number because Trump gave out his number when yeah. he came in. Rowley could FaceTime. Hey, Donald, you have another problem, you know. That you don't need ambassadors, yeah. high commissioners, you don't need go-betweens, you don't need to write no letter, man to man. man, to man. You direct, understand what I'm trying to tell you? Yeah, yeah. We live in yeah. a country where you could send a text 482 Gary. I call the police, but I'm letting you know. And? Yeah. So when you call 99, you could say, I don't text Gary. Eh? Yeah. The police say, no, God, why are you moving so? <laughs> we would have come. We would have come anyway. Why not text with boss? But you see, accountability. Oh, but we are sick of pin there. Yeah. Come back to this. We don't need all of them jobs for the boys, all of them high commissions, all, right. all of them embassies. Trinidad is wasting money. We just spent $20 million outfitting an embassy that we do not need. If you want to have a representative in the, in the critical points in the world, Trinidad needs five ambassadors. The Americas, United Nations, Asia, Europe, and the Middle East. The Middle East yeah. That's it. Yeah. We don't need anything else. Those people, because the Americas, he dealing with all of the Americas, yeah. Canada, America, right. Brazil, Argentina, yeah. Chile, right down to Ecuador. The man who handled Asia, dealing all, including India and China. Yeah. But you see, it, 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 is, it is more diplomacy, more pomp. It is less essential because your minister of trade could talk to the minister of trade direct. They could fax, fax gone out of style. They could email, even email gone out of style. You could be the minister of national security of China and Tobago and have the minister of national security of England as a Facebook friend. Mm -hmm. And you could talk to them right away. You could have a phone, you could call them, you could send them a text, you could send them a WhatsApp, you could call them. You do not need ambassadors. Mm -hmm. We do not need high commissioners. Like and if we everything. shut that down, we will save hundreds yeah, of millions yeah, of dollars. Yeah. And yeah. to all of the embassies and high commissions in this country that do not want their diplomatic pouches checked, stick a pen. Shut down for two years. Because we want to build a fence around Trinidad and Tobago that stops the drug trade. Yeah. If you have three and four nice mango tree in your yard, and your neighbor have three and four nice mango trees in his yard, but he have a five foot fence, and you have a three foot fence, who mango getting teeth? Your mango. Yeah. But if you raise your fence from three feet to six feet, who mango getting teeth? His. Yeah. And you put some nicer razor wire up on the top, and you protect your mango. And it's as simple as that, and I use it as an analogy for those who are victims of this disgusting PNM education that has stopped the people knowing how to think and taught them what to think. But we will fix that. We'll fix that too. But crime care done in Trinidad and Tobago until we secure the borders. Mm -hmm. Crime care done until you unstuff the containers on the port. Crime care done until you end the back doors like the diplomatic pouches that smuggling guns and drugs into the country. Once you address those things, then you could deal with the police service. You could bring internal affairs. You could weed out all the rogue because you have Super Gary and I trust that man. I trust him. So you could weed out all the rogue officers, get them out of the system. So what you have now is a proper run, clean police service with Super Gary at the helm. Let me incentivize them. Keith Rowley said they have 30,000 illegal guns in the country. Let me say $2,000 a gun. I want you busy. I want the police outside there busy. I'm giving you $2,000 for every gun that you bring in. Bring in the gun, we will fire it. They have a, they have a machine that just fire it in for um, to check ballistic the testing. ballistic testing. Yeah. So you record the ballistic testing, you destroy the gun. You don't put it back into the system for them to come and bring it back for the next $2,000. Yeah, yeah. Because this was a country that was trying to stop people 
that was rewarding you for killing snake. Mm -hmm. And in a flood, they find people was breeding the snake to get money for the food. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the solution increased the problem. That is Trinidad and Tobago. We bright, we real bright. And I say to you, if you incentivize police officers today, I know police officers that if you tell them you're getting cash money today, two thousand dollars a gun, they bring in ten guns today. My wife need fridge to wash a dryer. I go in out and bring it. Oh God, why them police going on yeah. so? Yeah. Now is the time yeah. to put your foot in people's neck. Where the guns? Yeah. Where the guns? All of a sudden, that's sixty million dollars. That is chump change. Sixty million dollars is less money than it took to pay for drapes in the prime minister's residence in Trinidad and Tobago. Yeah, we can't spend sixty million dollars <laughs> to take the guns off the nation road. Come on. Come on, we can't spend $60 million to take the guns off the nation's roads. Once those guns gone, people holding you up with slingshot. Don't move. Yeah. Ain't? <laughs> yeah. They're jumping over your wallet yeah. knife. And because we have Super Gary, law-abiding citizens, not criminals, not bandits, not gangsters, law-abiding citizens will be able to get firearms and firearm licenses, user, owner, operator licenses to protect themselves and their family. So when you jump over with your three chicken hall and I pull out my 357, it's a standoff. You have to decide if you're going back over the wall, you come back in in one piece. All of a sudden, you shift the balance of power and you give it back to the people and the citizens, the law-abiding citizens, and we could get to there in a heartbeat. If the Progressive Empowerment Party was in power in a week, hey man, for zero. We are on the port this morning. They are, they, it, what appears to be 22 warships in the harbor yeah. and fellas with big, big brass coming off yeah. to hold a press conference yeah. and say, we are working in tandem with the Trinidad and Tobago government to secure this nation's borders. As of today, nothing comes in. Nothing goes out without a stop on a search. That's Human right. trafficking, illegal That's drugs right. and illegal guns, done. That's right. So if, just get it done. Let it happen. Let it, let it be done. The Progressive Empowerment Party is the mechanism to get it done. Kamala fired Gary over a political stunt to defend Anna and Ram Logan, yeah. who get caught up yes, in the cacada yes, with David exactly, West. Exactly, Gary Griffith and exactly. Timothy Hamilton, the high-performing president of the Senate, he and all get passed in the rush. Mm -hmm. But she fired Gary Griffith to get rid of Stacey Rupnarine, who ring the bell on what was going on on the, on the QREP exchange. All that bacchanal going on since then, mm -hmm. the same Sinanan QREP exchange that went on in Kedona, that UNC people raising fuss for now. Why did they didn't stand with Stacey when she raised the fuss then? Mm -hmm. And the bus she chose. Yeah. This is a corrupt and broken nation. We have no systems in place. We have nobody in public office say, hey, stop. Let me check and see that. Where are all of the of the um what you call the people at the top in the secretary in, in the um the accounting secretaries in all ministries, permanent secretaries. Where are all the permanent secretaries? Where you bring Ish and Steve and Brian and Rene and all of them to, to, to the court. But where are the people who sign the check? Where are the people who sign off on all that Ish and Brian and Rene and them do? Where are those people? Because money can't come yes, out of the treasury exactly. unless the chancellor of the exchequer exactly. signed that check. Who signed that check? Exactly. Who approved that check? When the budget was done, Bastio Pande knew what he was doing. Money was set aside to you, the court. Uh -huh. Who was the head of you, yeah, yeah, All of these yeah, things, yeah, all, of them, these, all of these them. things, you, can't, you have to stop the stunting, you have to stop the playing and the pretending. You want real governance? Vote for real governance. You want to stop the corruption? Vote to stop the corruption. Patrick Manning knew that the tender's law was difficult for them to evade for corruption. So they set up special purpose companies, EMBB, EFCL, UDCOT, Sport TT, Vemcot, all of these, education facilities company, all of these companies, if you do commissions of inquiries on all of these companies, do forensic audits on all of these companies, mm. you want to find out where Trinidad money mm. gone? That is where Trinidad money Don't gone. Don't worry, Trinidad. One check. It come in. It come in. Them audits come in, you know. Grant my word. Hear me out. That audit on Trinidad and Tobago affairs will happen with a progressive empowerment party. Call the heart couldn't do what call the heart, but they say call the heart do without the permanent secretary being involved. Believe without the that. entire ministry being involved. I telling you, I worked for Gary Griffith as his communications advisor. And if they don't want to pay you a check, they make you fat. I know how long it takes. You have to pay people to go and stand up and wait. My money reaching yet? So anytime you see they're talking about corruption, the people on the other side of the glass who, who handed out them check, question them. The people who send the checks down for them, they call it the vote. Check them. The people who write them checks and approve those vouchers, check them because none of it could happen without a 
conspiracy. Trinidad and Tobago is broken by design internally. Our governments come to power with people who understand the system. You say in PNM and UNC, UNC and PNM, and it is the same jackasses, thief and money. PNM or UNC don't matter to them. These days, financiers has put a 10 million in the PNM and 10 million in the UNC because exactly. they're getting back a hundred million dollars exactly. regardless of who comes to power. Exactly. You losing. And Trinidad, you have to realize that. Do you see it does not matter between PNM or the UNC being in office? There's no change for the regular citizen. Can't you see that? You Can't have nothing. You have nothing. Oh, Mova beat them, oh, Lavantel and Silots. Mova beat them, Lavantel and Silots. A hundred million dollars would transform the lives of the people in, in Mova beat them, Lavantel and Silots. Mova beat them, Lavantel and Silots is what puts the PNM into office. Yes. And instead of treating with them, them you spend now. that hundred yeah. million dollars to pressure wash Brian Lara Stadium. To make friends and finances of the PNM rich, tell you take four hundred million dollars to rape the Aripo Sabana for Calco to run a highway to nowhere, yeah. so Senan yeah. can get a relax on the Miaro property. But the same hundred thousand people living Mova Beatam Lavatil Silots is them to suffer. Yeah. Everything from the top of Dego Martin to, to the bottom, so upside so down so and inside out, Bagatelle, so Patna, River Estate, Covin, Rich Plain, La Perta. Those people feed Rowley two daughters for all of their lives. Yes. Uh, he is in office because of them. Now that you are prime minister, you trying to tell me all you give them is one York structure stadium. If we do a forensic accounting into that, what we will find out, Rowley? Yeah, yeah. What we will find out? They have a formerly fat lawyer dogging me because every time I ask questions, they want to turn it into defamation. It is not defamation to ask where our money gone. You cannot pick up this country's assets and hand it to yourself or your friends and get away without somebody saying, hey. Exactly. Exactly. Exactly, Mr. Alexander. Right? There's supposed to be a system in place by which oversight Everything could be challenged. Look at the President of the United States, the most powerful man in the world. They have him under the cosh. His lawyer just went to jail. Said get sentenced yesterday. Three years. Mm -hmm. Imagine that. Three years. Trump is the most powerful man in the world. He could end the world. Yeah. <laughs> he could. The yeah, President of the United States yeah. could fight war for 21 days without Congress approval. Today, Trump could bomb everybody. He have 21 days authority. We have a country where nobody accounts and nobody asks. We have no oversight. Where's the financial ombudsman? When last have you heard about him? Do you know his name? When last you heard he do a job? He acting longer than Stephen Williams and acting better because he acting in plain sight. Nobody, nobody know what he does. The <laughs> bank's getting away with murder. In a country where depositors get zero, zero, zero interest. Yeah. Depositors get zero yeah. interest. And if that wasn't enough abuse, now they're charging you to hold your money. And you have no choices. Because the Bankers Association of Trinidad and Tobago in bed with the politicians and limiting your choices to Republic Royal and Scotia. That is madness in a country this wealthy, the third wealthiest nation in the Western world. Yeah. We were supposed to have 20 brands of banks in Trinidad and Tobago competing for your business. We don't. Because governments in Trinidad and Tobago are notoriously corrupt. This one, the last one, and every version in between. Trinidad and Tobago needs to decide to right size itself. And it is not going to happen by public office holders who eat in first. If you think they're going to give up that gravy train for you out of conscience, wake the hell up. It is time for Trinidadians and Tobagonians to understand their responsibility. These people not going to stop till you're back in chains, you know. These people not going to stop until you have no choice but to work for them and eat what they give you to eat and shut up. They're interested right now in your vote, your labor, and your consumption. They have no interest in your opinion. And very soon, they want your vote gone. All they want is your labor and your consumption. I say so and not a dog bark. Trinidad and Tobago is in a rotted state. This is worse than a cesspool. Trinidad and Tobago is broken by deliberate design. When this government come out of office, we ain't talking about the treasury empty. We're talking about the debt burden, billions of dollars that you and your children and your children, children have to pay. That's what's going on. That's what's going on. We need one million people sounding like me, sounding like Tony. We need one million people standing up and saying, hey, yes. what's going yes. on? Yes, yes. 
Yes. How could Absara and Tamnaktai get $41 million of national insurance money? money. Yeah. Interest free. How could Dupre and his band of thieves get $25 billion yeah. for Clico? Yeah. Yeah. The interest on Clico <laughs> money is our next $25 billion now. We've lost $25 billion. You know what $25 billion could have built? $25 billion could have built 200,000 house, 200 brand new school, 80 new police station, 80 new fire station, 41 general hospital, decentralized wasa, and put a water retention plant in every company, in every community, distributing water 24-7, mm -hmm. and still have about $10 billion left over. That is the $25 billion interest we lost, plus the $25 billion that they pick up from the treasury and spend it to bail out Clico. If you think that the PNM and the UNC gives a flies fart in a hurricane about you, you are stupid and you need to get yourself checked. Trinidad and Tobago, our experience has been nothing but political abuse. That's right. That's right. I hope you're listening out Trinidad and Tobago. I do hope your ears are open because we need to, to awaken as a people. We truly, truly do. 56 years, way too long. Philip? PepTT.com as our website. PepTrinbago at gmail.com is our primary website email address 3474PEP -E that is our hotline you can find us on the PEP app PEP APP it's available for download free of charge we have two pages the PEP page and Stand Up TNT the largest political page in Trinidad, group in Trinidad and Tobago all of them all of it's available for you free of charge Trinidad and Tobago this is a mobilization of minds this is a revolution of hearts we need to get you you all of you those of you who are conned into voting race those of you who are conned into voting bacchanal and those of you who are conned into thinking not voting at all some how helps you we need to mobilize wake up and stand together as one people under one flag right. because if your government is not serving all of the people we're in trouble until you see us next week monday stay safe Trinidad and tobago